Welcome to my very first video for my artwork. This is an older pastel drawing on black paper called Night Watch. And in one sense, it's kind of typical of what I do. First, I must admit that problems with this whole project exist. This is typical. The camera AI has changed the coloring in the center, which is actually almost a pale green. Here you see it more as a blue with almost cloud effect. Not bad, but totally unintended and not what you see in person. The other problem that shows up here is my hand shaking, causing a bit of a blur. Expect that in some of the photos here because it's very difficult for me to hold still and actually not jiggle the camera. Of course, I didn't have any of these problems when I was trying to do graphic arts on the computer because the computer screen doesn't jiggle, the uh, keyboard may, but uh, everything else remains steady and the colors as I see them on the screen generally are what turn out. This is just one of the many things that I created with an old program called Image Forge, which unfortunately is no longer around. This is the Tower of Retribution painting from a novel I'm working on. It's not finished. It's basically just blocked in. The tower itself is there, but no details. Uh, the black area below is called the Sea of Stars, and that white triangle at the bottom will be a jetty-like feature leading out to the tower itself. The black circle and the at the top of the uh, painting will be a series of four eclipses in conjunction with each other. Kind of something that can't happen in the real world, but we're not talking in real space here because the Sea of Stars is in an area between creations. Kind of an amusing situation. I'll take this point to tell you that I use a uh, type of paint called Open, put out by uh, Golden. It's a slow-drying acrylic and very similar in the way it handles to oil paint. Most apartments do not want you to do a lot of oil painting in their apartment because of the smell. So Open is a good substitute. Unfortunately, its slow drying creates its own problem. Namely, where do you put your fingers while the whole thing is drying? This is one entitled The Pinnacle of Blood. And this is at the Sea of Stars. The color is off. The background is actually a filing cabinet that's been painted a pale, almost a baby blue. <laughs> and you can see how green it's turned that. And it's added a lot of reds, but that's typical of the problems I deal with. But this is a three by nine canvas. And when you're dealing with this size, where do you put your fingers when the paint is wet? That became a problem to solve. The eclipse thing in the upper part of the painting is also another thing that I do. It takes a little bit of effort, but uh, we're going to go into the wet paint. Thing. This is an unfinished picture of some photos taken at Deception Pass up in Washington. 
What's important here is this wood frame around it that I created to hold these 3 by 9 uh, canvases so that um, my fingers would end up on the wood and not on the wet paint. A block of wood, a chisel, and a hammer, and voila. Here's a holder for 3 by 9 complete. And you can see where the wet paint splashes over the edges. Problem solved. This is a very out of focus finished painting of that same pass up in uh, Washington. Unfortunately, it's so out of focus, you almost can't tell what it is. So, uh, <laughs> so much for that. At some point, I would love to be able to afford to have these scanned in on a regular basis. The problem is some of the scanners are set in such a way that they eliminate certain blue tones because people scan stuff that is text or they make blue layout markings on them. And oftentimes this distorts the color of what I'm trying to scan. Yes, they, this function can be turned off, but if it's not your machine and you don't know what the settings are, well, you just paid good shekels for nothing because your colors came come out all wrong. This is an in-work painting called the uh, Sundog Space. It's going to have a literally space below the roof line. And painting the Sundog was a bit of an, an issue because my hands shake and kind of produce a very awkward looking circle. Cheap solution. A child's bowl turned upside down and using a Dollar Tree headband, I can paint the circle almost very smooth. The hole you see in the bottom of the bowl is to prevent vapor lock when I do the eclipse effect, which produces a ridge and it will actually seal to the bowl and the canvas. So if I don't pull it off within two days, it gets real mucky. Incidentally, I used a child's tumbler to produce the eclipse effect, the three-dimensional effect, on the pinnacle of blood. It, too, had a hole drilled in the bottom of it to prevent va vapor locking, which is a real problem when you've got paint mixed with uh, gel and built up along the only seal. It will pressure seal itself to the canvas, and pulling them apart produces a big mess. Here you see the same trick being used with a larger work, this is the Tower of, Tower of Retribution, but you can obviously see that this is way too big to use just a hairband. So a couple of pieces of wood, a couple of clamps. I'm actually in the act of producing something a little more sturdy and a lot easier to deal with using the pieces of wood, a couple of uh, carriage bolts, some wing nuts, and so on. The, it is not, the gadget is not finished. I sound like uh, Porky Pig there. Yeah, I do that. Get used to it. This is the back of an 8x8 canvas, and it shows the insert that I use to keep the bowl or cup or whatever I use for the circle from being 
impressed into the canvas and distorting it. The wooden holder around it works in the same respect as that one that I cobbed together for the three by nines. This one's just a piece of plywood and some uh, wood holding it. Unfortunately, the canvases are not all identically sized, so I have to jiggle them around to see how they fit in. Some are loose, some are not. Even so, this does solve a number of problems. This photo was taken on a cloudy day, so the AI of the camera had trouble figuring out the light metering. Either way, this photo inspired me to make some modifications to it when I paint it. Alouive! You have the path. This is obviously not finished. The black path is actually going to be a star field. Yes, the eyes are still going to be left in there. They're going to be hazed over a little bit. And you can see where I've added into the, the trunks of the trees. But this is typical of the way my brain corrupts things. By the way, Halloween is voila backwards. A start on something I'm calling the mountains beyond. This is a five by seven small canvas board. As you can see, the mountains are in place and I'll gradually get everything else added. This is something I call Rainy City Canyon Space. It was inspired by a photo of taken from an apartment I used to have. The waterfall is completely imaginative. There is no such feature in Portland. However, these are on 5 by 7 canvas boards and are the prototypes for a series that I'm going to do probably on uh, 12 by 9 canvases of which I can get packs of eight. A total of 32 of them will be required for all the different permutations that I have planned. I'm going to end this first one with the start of a painting of Night Watch, which is the pastel that I opened this with. The painting is a little further along than this at the moment, not by much, but this pad's camera just isn't going to allow nice photographs. So I'm kind of stuck with an old phone that takes reasonable photographs and a Cats and Jammer Kids version of photo transfer which includes the library's computer. Yeah, I gotta love technology and advancement because every time they make a new change, there is no backward compatibility. I would like to thank PowerDirector for their free software. Unfortunately, we're stuck with the watermark until I pay them ransom to get rid of it. In the meantime, we're trying to get a lot of the paintings done and stuff set up so that we can do the Milwaukee Farmer's Market next year. So those of you in the Portland area will actually get a chance to uh, buy some of these paintings. In either event, hopefully you've enjoyed this, and I my voice hasn't uh, totally thrown you off and we'll see you on the next one.